Welcome everybody. How y'all doing today? Um, we are going to start with an introductory video uh, into statistics, and this is really just going to define some of the terms and principles that we are going to use an awful lot. These don't necessarily fit into any one concept, but like I said, if I'm going to use words an awful lot throughout the next semester, I definitely want to make sure that we're all in agreement on what they mean. So let's start with the idea of what is statistics. All right. And statistics is defined as a body of principles and methods for extracting useful information from data. All right. Useful information from data. All right. It also it also assess assesses the reliability of that information. Um, it will assess the ability to measure and manage risk, as well as help you make decisions based on that data. And we'll take a look at all of those ideas throughout the semester. All right, so let's start with the term population. All right, and the term population is, right, whatever measurement you have, it corresponds to all the elements, period, not just in that set. So we can say a set of measurements that correspond to all the elements. All right, so for example, um, if we're talking about the United States, the population would be all the people of the United States. And one very common example that people use would be the census. All right, the census is basically a quite a few statistics that are always based on the entire population. So for example, um, if we're talking about the citizens of the United States, the citizens of New Jersey would be a subset of the population or a sample. All right, would be a subset of the population. So for example, we could do it geographically. Like I said, uh, people in the state of New Jersey would be a sample based on the population of the United States. Um, we can also do it by characteristics. So let's say we were doing eye color of the people of the United States. We could say 
a sample would be all the blue-eyed people in the United States or all the brown-eyed people in the United States would be a sample of the entire population. All right, so objectives. All right, the objective is to make inferences. about a population from a sample. Ah. All right, and the design all right is the data process to facilitate drawing valid inferences. So, like I said, this is a lot of defining terms. Uh, very rarely will I have a video purely of defining terms, but these are a lot of terms, as I said, that could potentially be used a lot. So we need to know what they mean. So there are two types of data. The first is a parameter. And a parameter would be a data related to a population. Data or characteristic. So whenever we're talking about a population, we're talking about the type of data or a characteristic, it's always a parameter. And our oh, excuse me, our second type of data would be a statistic. And a statistic would be either data or a characteristic. Character, hang on. There we go. related to a sample. And we'll have uh, very similar things that will be related to a population and a sample. For example, um, we talk about mean, you can talk about mean of a population, mean of a sample. When you talk about standard deviation, which we'll talk about in the next section, you could talk about standard deviation of a sample, standard deviation of a population. So one would be a parameter, the other would be a statistic. All right, and when we talk about the word data, we can say that that would be any observation that can be collected. All 
right? And now if we're talking about data, there are certain categories of data that we could use. So for example, the first category of data would be qualitative data. And qualitative data is non-numerical. data. Um, very often qualitative data is integral in any study. Uh, it could be anything, could be things like data on religion. That's a terrible eye. I can make a better eye than that. Right, we had mentioned eye color before, hair color, um, certain characteristics or aspects of people, anything non-numerical. All right, and the second is quantitative data. This is numerical data. Numerical data is a little bit different. So it could be things like uh, income, temperature, weight. We could also assess test scores. For example, if you're doing educational statistics, um, you might take a look at test scores, things like that. That would be quantitative data. All right. And within quantitative data, there are two subcategories. The first is discrete. Data and discrete data is countable and finite. Uh, for example, if we're talking about your data is eggs, let's say, you could have 20 eggs, you could have 21 eggs, but you can't really have 20 and a half eggs. So it doesn't take into account all the numbers in between 20 and 21 basically you jump all right and the second is continuous data and continuous data is not necess not countable necessarily um and has an infinite values. So for example, if we're talking about weight, all right, now very often we round weight to the nearest pound, but you could be 250 pounds, you could be 250 and a tenth, two tenths, three tenths, any number in between 250 and 251, you could be. Doesn't necessarily mean that your scale will measure that number, but all the numbers in between 250 and 251 are possibilities. So that, in a sense, would be continuous data, all right? And it is important on which one that you're using. Um, very often, uh, a lot of questions come up to me about rounding after a problem is over. Um, and those some of those questions are answered depending on whether you have discrete or continuous data. All right, the last are the levels of measurement. Um, I like putting these in. Um, they're not necessarily something we're going to use an awful lot, but there are four levels of measurement. All right, and the first is nominal. All right, and that is uh, categories by name only, not ordered. So, for example, Religion, Hang on. you would list your categories as uh, Jewish, Catholic, Protestant, you know, that kind of a thing. And what, whatever religion you put first, there's no, not necessarily a preference there. It's just you're ordering these by name. So there's no specific order. 
Uh, the second would be ordinal data. And the um, definition um, comes from the name ordinal data, so it is data that can be ordered. All right, and uh, but the but while it can be ordered, the differences might be meaningless. Uh, for example, if you're talking about a uh, NASCAR race, let's say, data could be ordered because you have uh, a finish to the race. All right, so they can be ordered by place finish, not necessarily um, by how they drove or anything else. Just purely, this guy crossed the finish line first, this guy second, this guy third, and so on and so forth. Um, can be your ordinal data. All right, so the next is interval. All right. And this again can, it's ordered. So it takes on some of the characteristics of ordered data, but the differences are meaningful. All right, so, and there's no natural zero. So for example, something like uh, IQ or SAT scores are two particular things where um, you have interval data because the differences are meaningful. So someone with a higher IQ some with a lower IQ or some with higher SAT scores. Lower SAT scores uh, might get into one college and not another. All right, and so lastly, the fourth thing is, is ratio. Yeah. Has all the characteristics of interval. All right, but there is a meaningful zero. Yeah. Meaningful zero. All right, and some examples of that would be uh, time, salary, height. So there are your levels of measurement. Like I said, the levels of measurement are not necessarily something that we're going to talk a lot about, but I do feel that when you're crafting a study in, let's say, another class, you might want to keep these in mind to kind of uh, fill in kind of how you're doing things. All right. Um, like I said, these are just a few of the terms we're going to use as we go through um, the semester uh, and other terms come up. I definitely am going to define them. I'm going to define them because I'm going to use them. And, uh, and once I define them, I'm going to put them to use. So I'd like to thank everybody for listening and I look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Bye.